Hey all, we are thinking about a new year and many of us are thinking about what we want to accomplish in that new year. As we reflect back on previous New Year's resolutions, we may not have always accomplished what we wanted to. Today, I want to share with you a smarter way to go about setting goals. A smarter goal is one that is specific, it's measurable, it's actionable, it's relatable, it's time-bound, we're able to evaluate the goal, and it provides us with a reward. Let's take a little bit further look into a smarter goal. The first step is we need to define or create a specific goal. And this goal should be one that is written down. I've always been told that you get what you focus on consistently. And if you don't have a specific written down goal, you don't know what you need to focus on. So let me illustrate by using an example. I'm gonna use this example for the rest of the video, but know that any goal that you have for yourself can be substituted in this in its spot. Let's say that I wanna save money. That's a good goal, but it's not very specific. To become more specific, I could do one of the following. I could say, I wanna save $1,800 this year. I could then take that a little bit further by saying, in order to save $1,800 this year, I need to save $150 per month. I could even go further by saying, in order to achieve my $150 per month savings, I need to save $75 per paycheck. That's a pretty specific goal and one that I know what I need to focus on in order to achieve that goal. So let's take a look at what we need to do next. The second step is to ensure that our goal is measurable. In our savings example, I'll need to know how much I had in my bank account at the beginning of the year, and then I'll want to track that progress through the rest of the year. So at the end of the first month, I should have saved $150. At the end of two months, it's $300. At the end of the year, I will have saved $1,800. Without being able to measure how we're doing against our goal, it becomes incredibly difficult to achieve our goal. So now that we have a specific and measurable goal, let's look at what we need to do next. An actionable goal is just that, opportunity for you to take action and to work to achieve your goal. This is my favorite part of the goal, is being able to work for it. You should look for ways each day in order for you to take a step closer towards your goal. In our finance example, maybe it's ordering out less, not using the Uber, going to the store and meal planning and making those savings there. But it's about taking action. Find little wins that you can complete each day that help move you closer towards your goal. Next, we need to make sure that our goal is relatable. What this means is that we need to make sure that our goal is something that we can accomplish at this stage. From our finance example, it means not setting a goal of saving more money than we earn in a year. So it's okay to start small and refine your goal later on in the process. So once we've made sure that the goal is relatable, let's take a look at what we need to do next. We now need to put a time limit on when we are going to accomplish our goal by. Putting a time on when the goal will be accomplished allows us to create some urgency in order to complete or accomplish our goal. Without a time limit on our, when our goal will be completed, it takes away some accountability on our part. It allows us to push it out and push it out and then to have some excuses on why the goal was never completed. By putting a time demand on when your goal will be accomplished, it puts accountability on you and it makes you work towards your goal. So now let's take a look at what we need to do next. We now need to evaluate how we're doing in comparison to our goal. This is a time for us to detach and to ask ourselves some questions. And it's okay if we're not at the point that we wanted to be when we set out on our journey. In the evaluation 
days, ask yourself questions of how am I doing? Is there anything that I need to refine? And what are the next steps that I need to take in order to get me either back on track or to keep going down the path in order for me to achieve my goal? The evaluation piece isn't something that should be completed at the end of the goal. Maybe not even one that should be completed once during the goal process. This is an opportunity for you to evaluate how you're doing on a consistent basis in order to keep you on track. We've now evaluated our goal. Let's take a look at the last step. That last step is a little bit of a re reward for yourself. You need to reward yourself. In our financial example, you've just saved $1,800 at the end of the year. Take a little bit of time to celebrate or to reward yourself for the hard work that you just put into achieving your goal. That doesn't mean that you can go spend the $1,800 in one evening but it does mean that you're able to celebrate a little bit and then to begin again two more things on goals the first is ideally embed your goals in your mind make it so that every decision you make every action or step that you take is in alignment with the goals that you set for yourself and the easiest way to do that is to write it down and then to put it somewhere that you're going to see it on a regular basis. It could be hanging in your house, at your desk at work, in your car, somewhere that you're going to see it and then read through it frequently so that you embed it in your mind. Second, the chances of us achieving our goal increase when we share our goals with others. Having an accountability group, sharing your goals with your friends, your peers, your loved ones, letting them know what you're trying to accomplish and then following up with them. Goal setting is not easy, but it can be done and your goals can be accomplished. Share with me what you want to accomplish in the upcoming year and I look forward to following you along your journey. That's it for this episode of Take 10. See ya.